Today we won't be working on our shipping container. We're going to do a different project, something that's been needing to be done. We're going to be adding two items in, which is a shunt and also a servo, which has a monitor on it. The shunt's purpose is to more accurately measure how, basically how charged your batteries are. It does several things. It measures how much current is drawn out of batteries, how much is char used to charge the batteries. You know, you put in the capacity of your battery, it learns more about your batteries as time goes on and will tell you more accurately than any of the other components exactly the state of your batteries. And then that is connected to the servo and so is the charge controllers and the inverter is all connected to the servo and the servo is kind of like a brain. And it uh, allows you using the touch screen or an app on your phone um, to program and control basically all of those components and see how they're currently performing. It also will connect to a Wi-Fi network if you have one. And then remotely you can use an app on your phone or your computer to basically log into your system from someplace else and see how it's performing and, and make any changes. You buy appropriate cables. We have two slightly longer cables that'll go to the solar controllers, one shorter cable that goes between the shunt and the, and the servo. And then there's a, another cable in here that goes to the inverter. The first thing we have to do is get this cable here and remove it because we need to cut it and then put terminals on and put the shunt somewhere in this area and then attach the cables to it. That's what did. Yeah, I don't think that's going anywhere. No. We removed this wire. We have the shunt on, angled a bit weird, but it works. You want to cut it or you want to? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Yes. Okay. Let's take that back inside and double check the, and make sure it's long enough. Yeah? Okay, both wires are done. We just have to do the heat shrink, but Jeff got this new gadget and it'll crimp. It says up to two gauge, but I think it'll actually do four gauge. And these are the nice wire cutters. So he's gonna shrink, or I wanna keep, I'm calling it shrink wrap, but it's the heat shrink. Yeah, pretty good. And now for this one. It's a weird name if you want to know the company. It's A-M-Z-C. I guess that's an A-C. I'm not sure. Weird anyways. These two came together and the heat shrink and the terminals we had to buy separately. So he's taking off the battery connector first. We'll get that hooked up. Okay. So let's hook this to the battery first, and then that's got to be angled right, Jeff. We'll look at it approximately after you get to both. Okay. Oh, hold on. This wire is connected. He just has to tighten down that bolt. We've already tightened this bolt down. And then we'll hook the next wire up. And then we should be good. There are three more wires that need to be connected, but actually two. One's an auxiliary. He's tightening that end up and then he'll put this end on. This is actually fairly easy. Well, this part anyways, 
I thought cutting the wire would be more complicated, but luckily he got that tool, so made the job much easier. Well, actually, he already had the tool. Oh, yeah, Jeff, you have to be careful. It's still considered live. Remember, it's battery on battery. That's why I said if you didn't want the spark, we could probably just unhook the positive. That is done. It's only 12 volt system, so. All right, yeah, there we go. Know, right yeah, so there's uh, one that goes to the positive, which is the red one over there. Okay, you just tighten that, and the light is blinking, so we're good to go. Of course, since it's a new product, it does require updating. That's going from 4.10 to 4.19. Going fairly quickly, so that's good. Well, that's nice. It shows what the current is. Even though everything is off, um, the inverter is still drawing 0.33 right, amps. So you set the battery capacity. Oh, and that would be going to set battery capacity. 700, oops, 700 amp hours. Oh, my God. I have to hit that. Can you just type that? Oh, yeah, you can. Okay. 700. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Next. Oh, oops. Next. Okay. Okay, the update is done. Now the next one is enable Bluetooth. So instant readout. Enable now. I thought my Bluetooth was ready. Enabled. Yeah, there's instant something. Oh, okay. All right. So let's see. So it's saying right now with uh, it drawing 0. 0.32 amps, it will the 700 amp hours will last for 10 days. That's cool. It lets you know yeah. how many days. Now the next thing it says set the charged voltage parameter. Where's that at in the settings? So this is what we have to set it to since it's a 12 volt is 13.2. And we had to go ahead and set the auxiliary. It wouldn't let us go to the next step. You have to select auxiliary and just put none since we have none. Then it uh, allows you to do the rest of the settings, which battery, uh, 700 amp hours, charge voltage. Yeah, it's 13.2. It's ready set. And um, current measure direction, normal, discharge. So the, all that should be preset. We shouldn't have to yeah, do anything with that. Just tells you what's the next thing. Okay, set the charge efficiency at 99%. Oh, charge factor efficiency, or right there. We want to set that to 99 instead of 95. Oop, oop, 99. Okay. All right, and then it says uh, set the, what does that say? Q-cart? Yeah, Q-cart. Oh, okay. This set to 125. What does 1. it say? 1.05. Oh, so 150. Okay. 105. A 105? Yeah. Oh, down then. Okay. You know what? I'll do what you said. One, oh, oh wait, point, oh, five. Next. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's the end of the instructions for that. Okay, cool. We're done with that. Oh, this is cool. I'm glad we're actually putting this in. This is the last step, and we're going to get it in place. But this is going to take a minute because uh, we have to program each device that it's connected to because this will control everything, where right now they're just guessing. The charge controllers, the inverter, all that. So um, we have to program it, and that'll take a while. This is the display. It has to be easily accessible because that's what you'll actually, it's a touchscreen display. That okay. controls this. This only has to be within reach, and all these cables are long enough. This is the VE bus, okay. One of these will use this, this cable. Looks like an ethernet cable, it is an ethernet cable. Goes in there and the other end goes into some connection on the bottom of your inverter. That's what connects it to the inverter. The, other cables, which are these. This is the shorter of the three. These are two longer cables. This is the shorter one. I think this is half the size of that. I've got the shorter one to go between this and the shunt. And the two longer ones between this and the solar controllers. And they will be plugged into these three white connectors. Doesn't make any difference which one. The black cable coming from the shunt, that's where the other end of this cable goes. 
from here to that black cable. So now you just have to figure lengthwise where you physically want the thing. I want to put this centrally located. The furthest thing it'll be away from is the inverter. So we have to make sure that cable is long enough. All the wire has been run to this area here. And that's where we're going to put the servo. And then the monitor is going to go here. And they give you a template to put all the screw holes and the big holes for the cables. It's working. Two down, one to go. Time to put in the monitor and then the cables will just plug into the servo and it'll power it. It's the next day and everything is complete. We just wanted to see how everything ran and it's working great. So we had to plug in each device separately and then program it to run that device. This is the readout that it gives. The battery's saying it's at 99%, but it's been a cloudy day, so we haven't got to full charge. This is what the servo thinks is full charge until it reaches full charge, which we'll have to wait for a nice, bright, sunny day for that, and we're supposed to get rain for the next couple of days. But it is what it is, and everything's working properly. All units are connected. So the AC load right now is 130 and the PV charger is 136. So it's bringing in a little more power than it's putting out. So that should come from the, let's see. Yeah, oh yeah, it should mainly come from the PV. Jobs like these are usually what people dread. I know I don't particularly care on working on solar anymore. But I was glad to have Jeff's help. It went really smoothly and we got everything done. And this is something I should have had done a while ago. We've actually had the equipment, but just haven't gotten around to it. Been procrastinating and I just decided, no, I want to go ahead and get it done. No more procrastinating on this. It was definitely simpler than I thought it was going to be. Menus and uh, do your different settings. For each component, and then there's a settings button. Anyways, that's one thing that's done, and I don't have to worry about this anymore. One of the next things I'm going to be working on is getting the solar awning on the shipping container, and all those panels will be going into my batteries as well for charging. And for winter, I'm going to change out these panels that are on my roof because they don't match. So I'm going to take four panels that match, and we're going to hook them up a bit different and then we'll remove the 265s and the 200s. I just want everything to match up there. Hopefully it should be fairly easy because we can use the same mounting brackets. Uh, the ones that I bought that tilt are actually made for bigger solar panels and the ones that are on there are a little too small for it. So it'll be nice to get the larger ones on there. Hi right, Kellogg, oh you trying to get the camera kissies? Look at Milton being lazy. <laughs> Anyways, this wasn't a super long video, but something I had to get done because I've been procrastinating, like I mentioned, and I'm just happy it's done. Another thing is that um, if I have to leave my rig like I did when I went to Texas, I can check on all the status of my batteries or what the solar's bringing in. I can even cut it on and off when I'm not here. Um, it even has an option to... Uh, connect to my tanks so I can see what my tank levels are and if I need to fill them up but I don't have that set up yet uh, I can probably do that at a later time but I'm just glad to have what I have done oh look the sun decided to pop back out that's awesome well, everyone, I want to thank y'all for hanging out with me during this video. If you liked it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to check out more videos, they'll be right over here. Or you can subscribe if you haven't already. Or check out Patreon. We'll see you next time. Bye. Mwah.